Lenin. Pages from a great life. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, a new type of state born in 1917. of triumphant socialism. A highly developed industrial power. A country run by the working people. Racial oppression, social inequality, and the exploitation of man by man have been banished from the Soviet land and real democratic freedoms have been established here. The purpose of socialism is to promote the well-being of man, of all members of society as a whole, and of each in particular. The Soviet state, now slightly over 60, was born of the great socialist revolution of 1917, of the ideas of Lenin. Lenin. The name is familiar to millions of people all over the world. To some he's a great friend, a hope, the banner of their struggle against oppression and exploitation. To others he's a sworn enemy, a ruthless subverter of bourgeois law and order. He was indeed both. But first and foremost he was a man, a man of genius, a remarkable, inimitable man. Our film offers but a few pages from Lenin's life. It tells of the first, most difficult years of the Soviet state. Chapter 1. The Proletariat Needs State Power. Lenin. Petrograd in the autumn of 1917. Under Lenin's leadership, the Great October Socialist Revolution has triumphed. For the first time in the world, a Communist Party has become the governing party of a country. Lenin's first concern was for peace. It was necessary to stop the devastating war that had been going on for three years, to get the men out of the trenches, to give the people of Russia the opportunity to live and work in freedom. Lenin formed the first Soviet government. It was made up of communists, professional revolutionaries. None of them had any experience in government. Indeed, they couldn't have had any, since everything had to be done for the first time. From now on, a new phase in the history of Russia begins. The Russian Revolution should in the end lead to the victory of socialism. It was here, in backward, largely peasant Russia, that the world's first socialist revolution took place. In these difficult conditions, in a country replete with social contrasts, work began on a reconstruction of society unparalleled in history. One of the new government's first legislative acts was the decree on the land. Landed proprietorship is abolished forthwith without any compensation. All the land became the property of the people. None of the parties vying with the communists at the time could offer the working people such a comprehensive program of democratic reforms. We can govern, Lenin said, 
only when we correctly reflect what the people feel. Here's the testimony of old newsreels. This was precisely what the peoples of Russia, oppressed for centuries, had dreamed of. No such machines cultivated the fields during Lenin's lifetime. But with the foresight of genius, Lenin wrote back in 1919, if tomorrow we could supply 100,000 first-class tractors, the middle peasant would say, I'm for communism. The Soviet government's successes gave rise to a tremendous political and spiritual upsurge in the people. But they also aroused fierce hatred and open armed resistance of the enemies of the revolution. With the support of imperialist countries, civil war was unleashed in Russia. You will now hear the voice of Lenin. Они помогают деньгами и военными припасами русским помещикам, которые ведут против советской власти войска из Сибири, из Дона, Северного Кавказа. Ленин, addressing soldiers departing for the front to defend the revolution. The Red Army is invincible, said Lenin, because it's united millions of working peasants with the workers who have now learned to fight, have acquired comradely discipline, who don't lose heart, who become steeled after slight reverses and are more and more boldly marching against the enemy, convinced he will soon be defeated. A new worker and peasant army was born in the fierce class battles of the first years following the revolution. It was defending its own government, government by the people. That's why, by the end of 1920, the Soviet Republic had been able to cope with internal counter-revolution and armed intervention by 14 imperialist powers. Building the new life was extremely difficult. It seemed incredible that the backward regions of the former Tsarist Empire could be awakened, that customs and traditions formed over millennia could be changed. Nevertheless, the revolution forged ahead. Most important, a new man was in the making, the master of his fate, the master of his land. He learned to run the state. The Soviets of worker, peasant, and soldier deputies became the political basis of the state, a new form of state organization. In 1918, on Lenin's suggestion, the Congress of Soviets adopted the first Soviet constitution. It was based on the Declaration of Rights of the Working and Exploited People, written by Lenin. The Constitution embodied the principal gains of the revolution, the dictatorship of the proletariat, the abolition of private property, the equality of all peoples, genuine democracy. Chapter 2 Communism is Soviet power plus the electrification of the whole country, Lenin. The internal situation was extremely grave. The economy was dislocated as a consequence of the imperialist and civil wars and foreign intervention. By 1920, industrial output was only one-seventh the pre-war. Most factories were idle. There were shortages of raw materials, fuel and food. On Lenin's instructions, Extraordinary measures were taken to combat famine. The first task was to feed the children.
food detachments were set up to deliver bread to the industrial centers. The main task was to develop large-scale industrial production and create the material and technological basis for socialism. Big industries were nationalized. An eight-hour day and workers' control were introduced in industry. But that wasn't enough. The important thing was people's attitude to work. On May 10th, 1919, the workers of the Moscow-Kazan Railroad repaired several steam engines in their free time. A minor thing, it would seem. But Lenin discerned in it an event of exceptional importance, the growth of socialist consciousness, a great beginning. The communist organization of social labor, he wrote, rests and will do so more and more as time goes on, on the free and conscious discipline of the working people themselves. The people of Kashino village, not far from Moscow, invited Lenin to attend the opening of a rural electric station. Lenin accepted and came with his wife, Nadezhda Krupskaya. A photograph taken on that memorable day. Lenin later recalled that one of the peasants had called electric light unnatural. Of course, he wrote, to the non-party peasant masses, electric light is an unnatural light. But what we consider unnatural is that the peasants and workers should have lived for hundreds and thousands of years in such backwardness, poverty and oppression under the yoke of the landowners and the capitalists. Lenin devoted much attention to putting into practice the idea of universal electrification. And in December 1920, the delegates to the 8th All-Russia Congress of Soviets heard a report by power engineer Gleb Krzyzhanowski. He spoke of Lenin's remarkable, breathtaking plan, the national plan for the electrification of Russia. Lenin regarded it as the party's second program. He said only when the country has been electrified and industry, agriculture and transport have been placed on the technical basis of modern, large-scale industry, only then shall we be fully victorious. At the time, Soviet newspapers called the Kashira electric station a giant. Then it was indeed a giant. But it was hardly completed before the construction of larger ones began. To Lenin, the electrification plan was an integrated, multifaceted plan. What we must now try, he wrote, is to convert every electric power station we build into a stronghold of enlightenment. Socialism provided opportunities for the spiritual advancement of the individual, for sweeping cultural progress. Enough of paltry truths, rub the old from the heart, the streets are our brushes, the squares are our palettes. So wrote Soviet poet Vladimir Mayakovsky. Indeed, the art of those years strove to spill out into the streets and squares, to be understood by each and all, to create vivid, stirring images. The spirit of the times was inimitable. For the first time in history, cultural values were brought within reach of the millions. The 
the first revolutionary plays appeared on the stages of professional theaters. Art belongs to the people. This slogan of Lenin's became a program of socialist cultural progress. We must overcome resistance from the capitalists in all its forms, Lenin pointed out, not only in the military and the political spheres, but also ideological resistance, which is the most deep-seated and the strongest. Lenin attending the opening of a memorial plaque to commemorate those who fell for the peace and brotherhood of peoples. It was designed by sculptor Sergei Konyonkov. Monuments were built to outstanding personalities and to mark events in the revolutionary struggle. To the French revolutionary Robespierre. Sergei Yesenian reciting poetry at the unveiling of a statue to poet Alexei Koltsov. In one of his addresses, Lenin said, study, study, study and the country studied. New institutes and evening schools for workers were opened. The country needed thousands and thousands of specialists. Future mathematicians, poets, physicists, astronomers. Science, too, came to the aid of Soviet power. Neurologist Vladimir Berterev, agrochemist Pranishnikov, biochemist Alexander Bach, the celebrated physiologist Ivan Pavlov, Space Age pioneer Konstantin Tsiolkovsky. The Soviet state was developing and growing stronger. Life was gradually returning to peacetime conditions. True, the peace was as yet unstable, unreliable. The country was encircled by imperialist countries. Complex international problems still had to be resolved. Genoa, 1922. Delegations from many countries attended an international economic conference here. Lenin's program was put forward by the head of the Soviet delegation, People's Commissar of Foreign Affairs, Grigory Chicherin. We, he said, are supporters of the principle of the peaceful coexistence of states with different social systems. We are for non-interference in internal affairs, for cooperation and disarmament. Lenin's platform was in the interests of people everywhere. Chapter 3. Lenin embodied genius more strikingly than did any of his great contemporaries, Maxim Gorky. It sometimes seems incredible that a single man, however outstanding, could handle the titanic work that Lenin did. In March 1918, the government of the Soviet Republic, headed by Lenin, moved from Petrograd to Moscow. Since then, Moscow has been the capital of the Soviet state. comrades, Yakov Sverdlov, Mikhail Kalinin, Anatoly Lunacharsky, The time was, as Lenin put it, still arch-difficult, and life in the capital wasn't easy. A 
American journalist Albert Wes Williams crossed the ocean to visit Soviet Russia. Soon he'd write a book about Lenin. And John Reed, author of the well-known book about the October Revolution, Ten Days That Shook the World. Lenin's study in the Kremlin. Here he wrote one of his outstanding contributions to Marxism, the immediate tasks of the Soviet government, and many other works. From here, Lenin led the country and directed the work of government. He was an outstanding theoretician of Marxism, one of the most educated people of his time. There are thousands of books in many languages in his study. When Lenin moved from Petrograd to Moscow, he was elected a member of the Moscow Party Committee and a deputy of the Moscow Soviet. Despite the enormous amount of work he had to do, he didn't neglect his duties as a deputy and often spoke at workers' meetings. On August 30th, 1918, at a meeting at the Michelson factory, there was an attempt on Lenin's life. For several days, the life of the leader of the revolution was in danger. Hundreds of telephone calls and letters were addressed to the government. The workers wanted to know of Lenin's condition. At the workers' request, a film was taken. You see Lenin on a stroll in the Kremlin courtyard. Recuperation was followed again by intense work. Daily strenuous work interspersed on the doctor's insistence with brief periods of relaxation. attending a parade of army reservists in May 1919. Lenin at celebrations of the second anniversary of the Great October Socialist Revolution. department next to his Kremlin study.
Here he often received visitors and had long talks, questioning, seeking advice, proving, arguing. Petrograd worker Yemelyanov recalled, I attended many meetings, I heard speakers for the Bolsheviks and Mensheviks and for various other parties, but I never heard a speaker like Lenin. His words united people and showed the road. Another worker, Danilov, wrote, Lenin's words thrilled and inspired. Fear vanished, weariness disappeared. days of rest at Gorky near Moscow. A few hours among friends and relatives. Yet even here Lenin continued to work. Peering into the future Lenin wrote of complete developed socialism as the prospect of international development. It was an important scientific discovery in Marxism. Lenin gave exceptional thought to the nationalities policy. It's a world issue, he wrote. Without exaggeration, a world issue. By 1922, it had become apparent that the best course for all the peoples of Russia was to unite in a single socialist state. We, Lenin emphasized, want a voluntary union of nations. On December 30th, 1922, the first All-Union Congress of Soviets opened in Moscow. Lenin was in poor health by then and couldn't attend the Congress. However, he prepared for it and wrote his thesis, which became a program of work for the Congress. Fifth Anniversary. The Civil War, he wrote, welded the working class and the peasantry and therein lies the earnest of invincible strength. Last year's famine also overcome. Now all out for the economy. The Congress of Soviets adopted a declaration and treaty forming the free and equal union of Soviet socialist republics. This was a new type of state, a state of the working people, a state for the working people, a state run by the working people. The Soviet type of state was won by us. It's a step forward for all mankind. That was how Lenin defined the world significance of the unification of nations, a result of the victorious revolution. The socialist movement, he wrote, creates new and superior forms of human society in which the legitimate needs and progressive aspirations of the working masses of each nationality will for the first time be met through international unity. Modesty and simplicity, respect and trust towards others, concern for people's life and future combined in Lenin with highly principled firmness, with an exacting attitude towards himself and others, Wisdom and far-sightedness combined with tireless work and indomitable will, erudition and the keen perception of a scientist combined with sincere love of life, of its true values and joys. That was Lenin, thinker, revolutionary man. Sergei Drabashenko. Direction Semiramida Pumpianskaya. Photography Wolf Citron. The film includes sequences from the USSR Central State Archives 
of cine and photo documents. A Moscow documentary film studios production commissioned by Soviet television.